All right, so Three Ninjas Podcast, Domino, Hess, Jones, Bobby, and we have a special guest in the dojo today, um, someone I grew up on in Bobby and Hesh, if he was here. Um, you know, oftentimes we have these conversations about were we Nickelodeon kids or Cartoon Network kids. I definitely was a Nickelodeon kid, you know, grew up on that since 86. Um, and I feel like the person that we're talking to right now really shaped a lot of my, you know, love for video games and hosting and things like that because that was the first time that i actually seen somebody that looked like me on tv oh uh, that I can dude remember. i got a comment about that all right, <laughs> all right. So, so other than uh double dare so on the on the in the dojo right now we have the host of nick arcade and a bunch of other shows that we're going to get into we're going to ask him a bunch of questions you're going to see how we keep his hair black everything like that we I have got a box in the, i got a box in the bathroom yo <laughs> <laughs> we got the one the only Mr. Fillmore. Yo, what's up, fellas? How you doing, Bobby Domino? What's up, fellas? All right. Doing hey, good, man. How are you? It's good to be here. I'm doing great, man. It's good to be here, man. Um, uh, you know, the other thing that people use always know is like, are you are you a Nickelodeon person? Are you a Cartoon Network? Or are you a Disney Channel person? Disney That's Channel, the other yeah. thing. Disney Channel is another one they used to throw up in there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they, they would ask me, like, I've had people ask me that. I'm like, I'm sorry. I my check says Nickelodeon. What do you think I'm going to say? Gonna say? <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to say? Yeah, gang, gang over here. <laughs> uh, but I have to admit, the one time uh, when my son was uh, was like five, six years old, I was being interviewed, and some some local Orlando uh, news guy thought he was being super clever, and uh, he was like, "Oh, he did our little chit in the chat," and he turns to my son and said, "And listen, before we go, tell everybody your favorite Nickelodeon show." Put the mic in front of my, my son's face. Live TV, he goes, Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> oh, you a traitor. <laughs> oh, lost this uh, Look, look Gus was kid. mine. Gus was my favorite, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cause, no, because listen, listen, you got to find, you got to go on YouTube and find, there is like, you know, being in the studio, you could hear all the different mixes of the theme song. All of our theme songs had ver a variety of different mixes. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Even, even like you know what's really. I'm not going. I'm not going to suggest y'all do this. <laughs> but if, but if you were of the ones that partake of like um, mind altering substances, mm -hmm. there is <laughs> there is a version of the Nick Arcade theme song when um, uh, there was a game that we played called Credit Call, and it was like. It was like I called it the smooth jazz version of the song mm. because like, it, it it lost all of the like. Dee, dee, dee. It was like I wanted like Barry White to come out the back and go yeah, you know. What I mean? <laughs> but all but guts has a version where I just call it the all drums, funk, Rick James in your face edit of the song where it was like there's a cut that they would play when the audience would come in and mm. it would just go do you have it and then it was just like <laughs> and it was just like and nobody was saying nothing else other than do you have it and just <laughs> I, yeah, I tried to aggro like, crack just to stand on the top of that thing and just dance, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now, where's the 90s documentary on all this stuff? Because I've never heard any of this. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. I haven't, I haven't seen it in tweets. Like, where's the 90s Nickelodeon documentary? Well, look, you know what? There's a thing. I think it was on Netflix or was it? Uh, I, I can't remember where it is. Everybody Google it. But it was on either Netflix or Peacock. Uh, or Paramount Plus. I mean, oh gosh, you probably remember. But anyway, it was called The Orange Years, and it was co-produced by um, Elisa Reyes, who played on all that. All that. Um, Thanks to love. So there, there's an actual thing where they got together and they talked with all of us, mm. um, and it was it was semi piggybacking off of this book that was written by a guy named Matt Clistine called um, uh, Slime, the mm. Golden Years of Nickelodeon. So they took like that concept and said. Well, let's do our own thing. And they they got all of us, man. They, they didn't just talk to us on camera. They talked to a lot of people behind the scenes. But the thing is, everybody's got their own different story. Like, everything I'm telling you, those mm. are mine. This is just me. Like, nobody yeah, yeah. ever asked me, what's your favorite Nickelodeon theme song? But since we're here just chitting and chatting, I'm just going to tell you everything. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't know how, how long we got you for, but we can go. <laughs> like, you can just keep I, look, look, look I, I just look I, people don't know like I, I i i was a little late getting here because i was dealing with la traffic uh but i told him i said look i'm hungry I'm, i might get up 
they get me like a glass of something to drink yeah. so I can keep the throw going. Cause I just Bro, walked in the door, do. but I told, I told these guys, you know, a certain day, well, they told me a certain time and I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, <laughs> I'm just happy to have you here. Cause I never thought in my life that I'll be able to speak to somebody like you. <laughs> oh man. I appreciate it. Well, essentially you know, so going back to the thing you said at the top of the show, man, um, there's a guy, uh, I, I, I get to hear that a lot. Um, you know, nowadays, uh, you know, since the nineties, I call nineties are the new black. So now mm. everybody wants to do their nineties con right. and I get to meet people, but there's a guy, there is a guy who, um, uh, they brought back double dare back yeah. in like 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went out there to say, Hey, to my friend, Mark, you know, to kind of support him, you know, like, you know, give the old like thumbs up to Liza Koshy who was doing the thing. They were out there crushing it. And I went there just like, you know, be in the background, you know, enjoy the day, maybe have some lunch afterwards. Mm. And the guy who was doing the audience warm up called me over and he's like, oh my gosh, he picked up his phone. He said, you got to talk to my friend. He's going to be, he's going to lose his mind. So he calls him up and he's FaceTiming him and he turns the phone in, and this guy like, like, oh my gosh. And he's like really excited to see me. I'm just thinking, okay, cool. This is like a really cool fan. Mm. Uh, turns out this brother uh, was, he is Steve Harvey's audience warm up. He also does the audience warm up for the Kelly Clarkson show. He does a warm up mm. for Family Feud. It's like he is one of the top audience warm up guys in Los Angeles. As a matter of fact, on a couple of shows that I produce, I've actually contacted his people and hired him to do warm up for shows that I was producing. This is how dope this guy is. Mm. Well, his story was he goes, You don't understand, man. Like, I was a contestant on Nick Arcade. <laughs> And he goes, and like living in Orlando, living in, wasn't he, he wasn't even living in Orlando. I think he was living in like one of the smaller cities, which once you get out of Orlando, you're really talking like, you know, Orlando's kind of a, I mean, Central Florida is kind of like, you know, swamp. Everybody knows, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so, and he said, like people in his family, they were all doing like nice, respectable jobs, but he had like these ideas of bigger things, but they would kind of go like, yo, bring it down, son. You, you, you living in, you living in Florida here. And mm. he said when he came onto the show, because he came on season one, mm. so he hadn't seen any episodes, no episodes that aired prior. And he said it was the first time in his life he ever saw anybody who looked like him doing what he wanted to do. And now he's up here large in LA, uh, you know, audience warm up to the stars now. And it was just kind of, you know, it's kind of interesting though. Uh, I'm, I, I showed up every day just to do my job and pay off my student loans, mm -hmm. but I had no <laughs> idea like the, the, the long-term effects it would have just by being present and mm. just representing uh, a section of folk that were, 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 weren't, rep weren't represented. Mm. I ended up finding out later on, it's interesting. The show was, um, nominated for an ace award for those who don't know <clears throat> everything now gets like you know everything streaming tv shows they get emmys but back when cable was out the the cable version of an emmy award was called an ace award mm -hmm. and the show was nominated while we were out here we came out we they flew us out to california uh the, the guys that created the show and myself and while we were out here we found out that that year uh um that i was the only like african-american host on television in the United States. Mm. Not, I, I was not the first, but like that moment in time, that that, time yeah, 1991, only. something like that. It was like, if you flip through the channels, that was it. <laughs> I was right. like, wow, you know? And you find them, you know, like that. So it's, it's interesting how, um, you know, people, uh, yeah, I think things you don't know. Like I said, I was just happy and thankful to have the gig and I was having fun doing it. And um, you, 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 just know, you just don't know what effect it has on folks. Yeah, because as I was doing my research and then, you know, I just go back in the roll of decks of like shows I used to watch. And I think the only other black host I remember is Omar Gooding on Wild and Crazy Kids. Oh, yeah. Right. And I think that was right. after your show came out. Right, but exactly. I remember just, you know, yeah. watching your show and be like, he's so happy and energetic. He gets to play video games or commentate a host. And he's the only black person I see hosting. I want to do that. Yeah. That yeah. shit look fun. <clears throat> It was fun. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you, the, okay, more, more behind the scenes stuff that nobody, you would not know. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. When, you know, when you have a video game show on uh, national television, international mm -hmm. TV, it's a hit. Uh, at that moment in time, every video game manufacturer was putting on the lip gloss, <laughs> getting down on their knees, grabbing the executive producers behind, puckering up, <laughs> 
and kissing it like a fat, <laughs> juicy steak. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so there were days, seriously, there are days when I'd be sitting at home when we weren't shooting, you mm. know, during the, during the hiatus time. Just sitting at home, you know, doing the whole family thing. Ding dong, I go to get them, go to my door, open it up. It's FedEx. Hi, this is FedEx. This is uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is your Fillmore. Yeah, sign for this. What you got for me? I don't know, stuff from Sega. Uh, mm. we, we got we got to deliver you from Nintendo. Mm. Oh, oh, hey, we got to deliver you from uh, you know Neo Geo, <laughs> and they would just like send stuff to like the the uh, the showrunner, the two executive producers, the network studio head, and myself. We would just get stuff sent to us, and basically with a note that, and I'm paraphrasing here, that said, "Take a look, see what you like. Mm-hmm. You want to put it on the show." Hey, go ahead. <laughs> hey, take a look. Take, go ahead, take a look. Dude, my, look, my son, at the time, he was like, again, like around like five, six years old. Mm. There was one room that we had that was like the TV room. We had, we had the family room, the living room. But there was a room that I set up that was like we had a bunch of TVs because we had so many game systems. Mm. That if people wanted to play multiple games. So we had this one room set up where we'd have, you know, the, the Nintendo over here. We'd have the, the Nintendo 64. We'd have the 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 the, the, uh, the Sega Genesis over here. We'd have the Dreamcast over here. We'd have the 8-bit system over here. It was like we had just everything just set Damn. up. Dude, they were just, I mean, so that was the extra, extra perk. I'm having fun. I'm on TV. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm making decent money, you know, <clears throat> look, I went from like, again, I wasn't joking. I went from still trying to pay off my student loans and trying to take care of family to, okay, look, we're, 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 we're doing, we're doing okay. And then they give me video games for free. Mm. Can't ask for nothing. Can't ask for nothing else. <laughs> That's why when people like, it's so weird because like, I think we all should be like growing trying to achieve everybody's got the, you know, you've heard the thing of the bucket list. Mm. I kind of stopped them like, dude, I mean, like what happens when you successfully do your bucket list by 30? Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a flex. That's a flex. (laughs) You know, so like everything else is just bonus. Everything else is just bonus blessing. It's like, what am I doing now? I'm doing this thing. Why? I don't know. It's it's, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Something new, you know, again, it continues to pay the bills, but like, 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 what do you really like? What's on your list? Man, that list is, yeah, I, like I said, it, was, it is a blessing because, man, a lot of the stuff is checked off the list mm. just because of Nickelodeon. I, mm. I got nothing. I mean, like, the 90s Nickelodeon was the best. The The people that ran the network uh, out of New York, they were the best. Mm. Um, and that's why I think, like, you know, people ask me now about the difference between Nickelodeon now and Nickelodeon then. And I'm like, I don't know about Nickelodeon now. Actually, I'm not program. there. Now. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm not there. I don't know. But I do know the folks, like the the the, the, the incredible and talented people that were, you know, creating the shows and and hiring the hosts and the actors and, and actresses, and they just were they just were in a totally different place, man. And um, man, thank thank God they were, because I mean, you know, uh, it seemed like it was lightning in a bottle. Man. It was like really the right place, right time. It was a decade that was amazing, and I have mm. not seen anything even come close to it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't think that we can create that now with uh, social media, your YouTube, your streaming and stuff like that. I think that's pretty much impossible. And then like the attention spans of kids, I don't mm-hmm. think they really want to, you know, sit down and actually watch a half hour TV show dedicated to games. I mean, G4 just came back and that flopped. Man, you know what? I, first of all, let me sit back. Let me play. Let me play old man in the room for a second. <laughs> okay. on the, I'm going to do old man in the room for a second. Hey, tell you something, Domino. Ninja Domino. Um, Dude, that was some deep, deep cuts you made right there. Because most people around you guys' ages, they don't get that. Mm-hmm. Like, they, 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 they remember the nostalgia. They feel the nostalgia. You know, when I go and make these appearances and do other podcasts, I, I, inevitably somebody always talks about doing a reboot. And I kind of want to go, I mean, what you're doing right now is you're, 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 you're chewing on the member berries. <laughs> you, 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 you know what I'm saying? You're trying to get your feels. But if you really, and I got to talk business to them for a second. I'm like, let's take a look at the marketplace right now. And I was saturated with all of these ways in which people can get content. Let's look at the length of time of the content. And I go through all of these things and I, and I break it down as to why 
it's not something to just turn around and say, let's just do it because you remember how good it made you feel because the landscape has changed so much. And the mm. biggest thing that, um, uh, I, look, the creators of Nick Arcade and I uh, are actively trying to get the rights to the show because we want to do something that's a little bit different. Um, mm. But um, we still need to get their permission to do it. As long as they own it, we can't just pop up and do anything. Right. Uh, but but the thing that also is super important, and this is what I think we have an idea about, the one thing that people don't get is not just talking about like uh, being able to get content via streaming and all these other places, mm. but let's just talk about the technology. See, if you really think about Nick Arc, if you watch it right now, because right now I think you can, you can watch old episodes now. They, they have it on Paramount+. Plus. When okay. you really just watch the show, it's just like, Okay. But the thing that made the show back then was you were able to do something only on the show that you could not do anywhere else. Right. And that was go inside the video game. Mm -hmm. Right. Dude, I got an Oculus in the living room. I can <laughs> yeah. do that. I can do that on the toilet. Right. right. Now. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? And so the idea of just doing something that you could just randomly do at home, that's not appealing in the eyes of a network. You've got to mm. come up with something. I mean, the, the technology to make Nick Arcade work was invented. Mm. It's not like they invented it for the show. These guys invented it, the technology, and went, what are we going to do with this? Exactly. And they, they came up with a show. So it's got to be something wrapped around whatever the next incarnation of a video game show that, that we do. It's got to be something that says, and you can only do this here. You might be able to do a piece of it at home, but mm. what we end up doing is something that you can only do here. Because without that, you add that on top of everything you just said about all the different places where you can get, you know, IP now and get, mm. get content and the attention span of people. You add that on top of it and you're like, you're pushing a snowball up a hill. You know, right. it's really, you know, but most people don't get that. So do I'm, I'm sitting up here. I'm sitting up. I'm having, I'm having an uncle nephew moment right now. I'm going, <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Cause that, you know, normally I have to explain that, but the fact that you get that, man, I commend you do. Yeah. Yeah. Because we reached a point where we're trying to get nostalgia to work and it's not connecting. And I think that's the reason it's just too much accessible technology or just ways to actually put everything out there. Cause everybody wants to be a star Everybody got ideas. Everybody with a mic think they're a podcast or a host or something like that. It's just we're getting to a point where I don't know why we're trying to, I guess, bring older things back, thinking that the newer kids are going to like it. Because I think if they switch their audience, we would like somebody my age would love Nick Arcade to come back. I don't right. think my daughter would actually watch Nick Arcade. <laughs> right. Right. And the weird thing is, but not the weird thing. And on top of that, the people that, mostly dominate uh, uh, these, 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 these ways of getting uh, content mm. are not, are, are younger than you, you are. Right. You know what I mean? So, so you're going to put content that appeals to a majority of the audience that isn't really saturating the airwaves. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like the people who are, are dominating the airwaves would be interested in it. And those that would be interested in it aren't on the airwaves with that same dominance, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's gotta be something. If I, I still believe though, if you, if, you know, if we, if we come up with something that is a unique and original hook that just makes anybody go, wow, that's different. Right. I mean, people like, people like that. People like when you throw something up and it, and it, and it's, it's unique and it catches you. I mean, even if it's something, even even if somebody does like a, a interesting, crazy move on TikTok, it's mm -hmm. like, wow, I've never seen anybody do that. What? It's not that, oh, you were on TikTok that made me go, wow, and, and click that button. It's because I saw something that was interesting, unique, or different that mm -hmm. intrigued me and made me go, all right, boom, I'm going to follow this person. So the show's got to have that. This new, this new incarnation, whatever it is, cannot rely on the member berries. It cannot be successful with just the fan base that grew up with the show, it's going to have to be appealing to a new audience and they're both going to have to like, you know, Come hold on. it up together. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's the business side of me. Okay. I'm taking that hat off and being like, okay. So <laughs> no, no, no. Cause I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Slow it down. <laughs> You're going to fall in love. Pull it now. Slow it down. All right. So we're back. I 
actually got a present question for him for um, where we left off at when you said um, in order to bring a show back, you have to have something or basically to get everybody involved. Do you think that family double dare could work today? If they tried it already. Oh, shit. 2018, <laughs> yeah, 2018, they brought back, they brought back double dare. They, but and they 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 to appeal to the crowd that grew up with it. Mark Summers was no longer the host; he was like Harvey. He was now the announcer. Mm -hmm. And then the new the YouTube phenom Liza Koshy. Yeah, he brought on Liza. He was yeah. the host of the show. So they already did this thing to kind of like you know change it up a little bit. And um, hold on, I'm gonna send y'all something. Are we rolling right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. All right, all right. I'm looking up. All right, I'm looking up something right now because I got to send y'all something that y'all appreciate having asked this question. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm say this right, right now if I can find it. But yeah, they brought the show back. As a matter of fact, now listen. In the in, I, despite everything I just said about how the show needs to be in order to come back and be successful, there is one part of me that like shakes my fist because <laughs> uh, in the 2000s they have done a reboot of every show. Yeah. Except Nick Arcade. Yeah, I was gonna ask that. They brought back they they brought back um, uh, guts. It was called My Family's Got Guts. What? Mm -hmm. They brought back yeah. They brought back Figure It Out. Figure It um, Out. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, with uh, Jeff, my, my good buddy Jeff Sufton, uh, mm -hmm. aka Pick Boy from Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. um, they brought back. Um, uh, they brought back most recently Legends of the Hidden Temple. They made it a movie, and mm -hmm. then uh, the CW did it with Grown Ups on the CW network. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. And 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 so it's kind of interesting, like, wait a minute now. Every show except, okay. Yeah, All right. yeah. <laughs> All right. And, and, and the, the weird thing the is- The one like, with the black man on it. The one with the black man. The, the, the one with the, the only brother in the house is the only one. Oh, I see what you're doing. You gotta open up your uh, third eye, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> see what they doing. Oh. So yeah, yeah, hold on a second. We're oh no, hold on. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I was trying to zip you this thing. I was trying to zip it on an instant stain. Mm -hmm. But oh message. There you go. Okay. I'm trying to message it to you. Where are you guys? Where okay. Um gosh, what is your thing? I gotta find what you call yourselves again. Oh, it's gotta, three ninjas podcast. What's it called? Three ninjas podcast on, on three. Instagram. Okay. Three. Okay. Three Ninjas Experience. Is that it? No. <laughs> no, three <laughs> three ninjas podcast. I feel old okay. typing. <laughs> old I know, right? Typing over there. The no, one no, finger. No, 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 you, know, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you got the ET finger. What's going on? Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> like, you see I put on my glasses so I can see what I'm yeah. looking at. All right. <laughs> uh, all right, hang on. Three ninjas podcast. Come on. It's saying that I can't find it. All right, look, I'm trying to find this thing and send you this picture because, um, uh, or you know what? Wait, I know what I'll do. I know what I'm going to do. All right, let's keep talking. I know <laughs> what I'm going to do. All right. All right. So basically what I want to do is take it back to the beginning. So okay. you're from Baltimore, right? Born right. and raised. Mm -hmm. On the playground. Right. Is what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So how was it growing up for you in Baltimore? Because I haven't heard, you know, the best things about Baltimore. I've seen the wire, you know, stuff like that, the crack era and stuff like that. So <laughs> well, how was it going to Baltimore uh, for you? Yeah, Baltimore was great for me. Um, you, Baltimore, just like so many towns, has, you know, has had an evolution. Um, uh, you know, I didn't grow up in the suburbs. I didn't grow up, you know, with a silver spoon in my mouth, you know. Um, I, I lived in the city. I, you know, walked to school. Um, you know, I lived there off of Garrison Boulevard and Liberty Heights. Anybody know what that is? Mm. You, you know, now it's kind of like a place that's a little sketchy. But that's mm. where I, you know, got up, you know, walked out, walked out to elementary school every day. Um, uh, uh, and I guess just over time, just, you know, with, with the economy and difficulty that people have just life in general, um, you know, the city has changed, unfortunately in some areas due to, you know, just circumstances, you know? Right. Um, but for me, it was great. The thing that was good for me growing up is just, the, 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 I'm going, I'm going to sound like fast X, but it's all <laughs> for the family. Man, I had great family. <laughs> I, great family. Now, I'm an only child, if mm. you couldn't tell. Um, right. <laughs> the kitchen whore that I am. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm an only child, but my family, look, my mom, my dad, uncles and aunts, um, 
cousins. I mean, the other thing is I was like the only boy in our age range. So, you know, you got your older cousins, you got your younger cousins. When you get to the group that were your cousins, I was the only boy. So mm. I found, I kind of felt like, you know, king of the mountain there. And it was, it was all good. Um, mm. But my family was just always loving. We always had a lot of fun. Uh, you know, once I grew up, I found out there was some shenanigans going on. Like, oh, I didn't know Aunt Susie was had a thing with, with Uncle Joey over here. And mm. I didn't know I didn't know that the sister so and so didn't like sister so and so. That's yeah, why I never really saw them. Daddy, as, <laughs> right, exactly. Right. I didn't know that because my cousins and I, we just enjoyed, you know, our lives. We love mm. being kids. We love, you know, having fun. And like I said, my family. It, it, uh, you know, it extended and right there in the house was a good part of it. Mom was the, the best. I mean, let, let me tell you how it translates from mm. growing up to, to from from growing up to being grown. So, you know, uh, uh, what got me, I got, I went from Florida, I, I went from uh, Baltimore down to Florida because I went to college there and I just happened to be living there working when I did this career change and got in the show business. Mm. That's how I was in Florida right there at universal studios it was literally they built a studio in my my back door when i decided to do tv stuff mm -hmm. just you know the universe oh, yeah, yeah. coming together you know <laughs> um but um the day i remember the day that i told my mom you know having gone through school having amassed all of the student loans i just got married um, and, um, I was going to get in the show business doing stand up comedy. A guy mm -hmm. decided he, a, a, a manager said he would manage me. He would get me some gigs, but it would start out small and I had to work my way up. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. And I remember it was the hardest phone call to tell you to call your parents mm -hmm. and go, okay, look, um, I know we've been doing it. It took me, it took me 11 years to get a four year degree. And, and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I partied and I just, this, 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 yeah, like now I got a job. I got, I got benefits. I got dental and I got medical and I got vision, but I'm going to throw it away to go through stand up comedy yeah, for no. maybe 50 bucks a night in, in, in some, you know, bent toenail Florida, uh, mm -hmm. outside of Orlando. And my mom's reaction without hesitation was, well, it's about time. Mm, she knew. She saw it. She knew. She knew. So it was always like that, you know. It was Not always like that. Yeah. yeah. Mom's be yeah. knowing. Yeah. They know. I, I, I know what you was doing. I know. I, I know. <laughs> 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 yeah. So love her. Love her. Love the family. Uh, so growing up was fun. I did. I uh, wasn't really in the sports. I'd always been sort of uh, uh, like uh, just, you know, kind of a nerd. You know, I like, I like, I like space like i thought at one point my, all my friends there, there's three guys that i'm still friends with we've been friends i think the longest one we were friends when we were eight years old mm -hmm. and the other ones i met you know somewhere else along the way and we're still friends to this day every time i go back i gotta get together with these guys either together or individually but mm -hmm. all of them said collectively we all thought you were going to be a scientist. You were always talking about space stuff. You had <laughs> telescopes in your room. You mm. know, you were always talking about the stars. When, you know, when, when the men were landing on the moon and they built, they put up the first space station Skylab, you knew all the stats on it. Everybody thought that's what I was going to do. Mm. Uh, so it's kind of interesting, like this weird paradigm shift. But, you know, like I said, it was, it was a supportive, uh, a supportive group of people. And everything was, I just, I just enjoyed it, man. I got no problems. All of those, all of the things that Baltimore has uh, evolved into because of social economical things and political things, it's unfortunate. Um, and if it were there, if it was there when I was a kid, again, my family shielded me from it. Mm. Okay. So you had a good dynamic where you didn't get lost in the streets of Baltimore. They kind of kept you like close knit. You know, they kind of yeah. blinded you from like the BS that's going on outside the gangs, you know, drugs and, you know, anything else that, that you can get into. Look, I knew, look, I knew people were in the gangs. I knew people did drugs, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I knew it existed, but, but I never felt like, like one of the things that I've heard, I'm no psychologist, but one of the things you hear about a lot of times when people join up with certain things is because for them, they fulfill something in, you know, th these outside things fulfill something in them. Yeah, whatever yeah like a sense of family or something like that or belonging. Whatever. I didn't have that yeah, emptiness. Had, yeah. Exactly. 
So, you know, I mean, you know, what what you want to do? Well, we're going to go over here. We're going to smoke some reefer. All right. Um, what time are you going to be done? Seven? All right. Yeah. I'll see you then. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> And by the yeah. way, look, I was I was no super Johnny nice kid. Look, I was no I was no Theo Huxtable. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but but here's the thing. My my disposition, my personality, my energy has always been that. And I remember at a couple parties discovering that certain things like slowed me down and I didn't like that. Mm-hmm. Like I remember like everybody's like, dude, how you feel? I'm like, I feel all right, but I really feel like going faster and i can't (laughs) you know what i mean just and i may have been talking fast and i may have been doing stuff but in my brain i felt like i was slow poke rodriguez you want to be speedy right and so so it's really weird there is no i would love to come up with some great metaphysical thing about life give you some great scripture it was like no the stuff jacked me up and it made me feel like I was wearing like lead in my drawers. And I'm <laughs> like, uh, I want to get up and party. All the honeys are coming in. I feel like I, I don't feel like getting up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so getting up, they go, I, you know, pulling my Lando Carizian. Hello. What have we here? I just want to sit back, <laughs> man. You know? So I was like, okay, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I, maybe I'll have a little drinky drink, but mm-hmm. yeah, it was a lot of things that I just kind of shied away from just, because of my disposition and my personality mm-hmm. and it's truth, truth, truth. I mean, it's facts, man. There were things happening and I was like, it just felt like it was like slowing me down so much. So that was just me. Got you. Now, why did you feel the need to play it so safe? So you went to school for, you know, a certain thing, you got a job, I guess as a computer tech or something like that, but then you winded up quitting and just being, I guess who you naturally are in something that you really want to do, did you feel like you that was like unobtainable being like a stand up comic or a host or whatever? Or you just hey, you know what? Like, hey, this is something like I got benefits. I just got married. Yada yada. It, it goes back to something that you actually said. Um, and but 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 I also I personalized it. Mm. I wasn't that I didn't see anybody who looked like me doing what I wanted to do. Because there were plenty of people, you know, you could see it, but to know someone it was, it is was, different, it was, though. But but I, but still, like, look, we played. Look, in my house, Richard uh, uh, Richard Pryor records played. You mm-hmm. know, Cosby records played. Uh, uh, you know, um, the, the comedians. You know, uh, Della Reese records yeah, played. Eddie you know, Red Fox. You know, stuff exactly. Like that. Red Fox records played. You know, that that good old Fred G. Sanford <laughs> was like cussing up in our yeah. living room. You know. Um, so, so I had people who looked like me, but it wasn't about that. The reason why I played it safe was, and this is, oh man, dude, you are on point with your questions. Nobody's ever asked me this. <laughs> I've had these conversations with like friends, but mm. like no one has ever really like in any podcast, any interview or any appearances ever asked me, but I didn't see anybody who acted like me. Mm. Okay. So this, like this guy right here, this, this is that guy you saw on TV. I wasn't on TV. Look, I don't act like this because I was on TV. I was on TV because I act, I like, act this. like this. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So I didn't see anybody who acted like me. They looked mm. like me. But the idea of like, can you imagine? Like, I have not moving since we talked. But can you imagine <laughs> me microphone? So listen up, y'all. Um, yeah. <laughs> my wife came home the other day. I was like, girl, what are you doing? Brother? I could not, there's nothing. So yeah. what ended up happening is, uh, so I, I went, you know, and of course I was a, I was the product of my environment. Look, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a only child for a while with a latchkey kid, but not mm. because like parents were neglectful. At one point, my mother decided to go back to school to get her master's degree. So mm. when I got of a certain age, you know, dad was working late you know, coming home normal, like six thirty seven, but mm. then mom would get off of work and then she would take her evening classes. Yeah. So, so I grew up in an environment where like, I remember tripping when, um, the, the, the Cosby show first came on and a lot of people were saying like, that's not real black. And I stopped and I went, well, that's look, I grew up living on Garrison Boulevard in Baltimore city. And we talked just like them and mm. people went to school and they were focused on education just like them. We weren't like doctors and lawyers and stuff, but like it was what people, it was what I saw around me. So the idea of, I didn't call it playing it safe. I just tried to do stuff so I wouldn't have to, so I could move out of the house 
and and not be dependent on on my family or supporting me you know mm -hmm. and so but the reason why i didn't break into the, into the, uh, the business is because i didn't see anybody who acted like me until and it's so weird because i would love to sit up there and throw a whole bunch of brothers up mm -hmm. but the people that made me go well maybe i should try this were um the early career of steve martin mm -hmm. the early career of howie mandel mm -hmm. and um uh and and george carlin mm -hmm. Those guys brought energy to the stage. Hmm. If you got, if you, if if any of if if anybody listening just goes on like YouTube and Google any of them, George Carlin, like George Carlin, can't talk without doing this the entire time he's talking. Like, what are you doing? Like, look, <laughs> Howie, Man Howie Mandel, we all know him as just this judge on the voice. But the reason why he's famous is because he had big curly hair. He did this cartoon called Bobby's World. Remember Bobby's yeah, World? I remember Bobby's World on Fox, yeah. Yeah, and, and then, but Howie Mandel was this hyperactive stand-up comic who used to end his act by blowing a rubber glove up on his head and it would pop off. Mm. Steve Martin, from back in his days on SNL, would do like the wild and crazy guys and the happy feet. Yeah, and right. it was like, I saw the, the energy and I'm like, wait a minute, okay. So they may not look like me, but it, the look was never an issue for me. I resisted doing it because I want this is who I am and no comic has this sort of disposition. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the idea of being able to just stand up in front of a microphone and just talk. Dude, I can't talk on the phone without walking and pacing the house, you know? <laughs> right. So uh, when I saw those guys, that was the, I think that was the seed that was planted in my head. So when I eventually did give it a try, a seed had already been planted. I had, like memories of something that I said, oh, well, these guys made it work because, you know, they, they weren't, they weren't rejected by the business because they weren't just standing there in front of a microphone. So mm -hmm. I tried to adapt what I was, you know, writing to fit my, my energy and my, 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 my disposition. Mm -hmm. What about, um, Robert Williams? Oh, and Robert Williams. Thank you. I, yeah. I forgot about him. Yes. But yeah, he's on there too. Yeah, yeah, he was out there. <laughs> he was yeah, out he was, there. Robert yeah. Williams was all over the place. So when you got like those four guys, again, it wasn't about it wasn't about skin tone. Mm -hmm. It was about energy and 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 disposition. And if I was going to do this, you know, I needed to feel confident that it had been done. You know, so then I would give it a chance, but adapt things and make it you know to reflect me. Mm -hmm. Got you. Now. You know that this disposition is you. People that mm -hmm. know you know that this is you. But when the cameras go off, do did you face any like, I guess backlash from other black people like, oh, he cold switching or? No, you know, this is the this is always you didn't fit the prototypical black person. I guess. Well, look, look, there's there's, there's always the things where you know, look, I, look, I I just mentioned the 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 flack that that the Cosby show got, it was groundbreaking yeah. and yet they got, they got flat, different world. It was groundbreaking, but living single, mm -hmm. yeah. you have queen <laughs> Latifah, the queen of hip hop. And yet they're still getting called like, Oh wow. You guys are switching up. I'm like <laughs> She's an intelligent, literate human being. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Exactly. So the thing is, look. So the thing is, fortunately, I didn't, I didn't grow up in the era of social media. So I, there was nobody dropping comments and stuff. I just decided to be me. I looked mm -hmm. at my family; they were all nice and doing doing okay. I saw these cats that were like my sort of influence with respect to the physicality of the business, and I said, okay, they put themselves out there showing like who they are so mm. i'm just going to try to put myself out there i never stopped and said hey guys you gotta like me somebody hired me so they said they said we like you right like this so that matters. I mean? yeah right so, yeah so i didn't stop and they sign my check and you don't <laughs> right when, look when, when i auditioned i'd never done anything on tv before when i auditioned for nick arcade i went in and i took a look at you know you take a look at the sides which is you know just two or three pages of the, the script you know mm -hmm. learn what the show is about and i went out there and you know it's you know i just kind of went with how it felt the biggest thing and i'm going to give credit to every kid that was on the show right now because mm -hmm. the biggest thing that inspired me was them 
because it's it's kind of scary being on TV. You know what I mean? And I would watch these kids come in and, you know, my scenario of being a contestant as a, as a kid on a game show is this. So you, these adults who you don't know take you away from your parents. <laughs> They take you into a room and go, hey, I like that outfit you're wearing. Put this on. <laughs> <laughs> then they take you into a room where people who you don't know start putting makeup on you. If you're a girl, you may have been used to like doing stuff. For a lot of people, they've never had makeup put on them before. So it's a little bit unnerving, mm. you know, to have somebody like, we're just going to put some powder on you. Why? You know, with then, my daddy. right, exactly. <laughs> then with my daddy, then they send you to another person who looks like, you know, big old beard. And he's got ice, ice, baby, cold hands. And mm. he's running a cord to your microphone up your shirt. And you're like, oh, stranger danger. And, you know, <laughs> putting on a microphone. Then, then they bring in 400 total strangers called the audience. Mm. And then they put you on a podium and go, add natural. Ain't nothing natural about none of that. None of it. None of it. So I would look at them and I would see them sort of uh, uh, begin to, you know, clam up a little bit because they were nervous about the situation. So it's almost like, you know, you ever notice, like, if you ever been in a situation where you're starting to doze off and somebody goes, hey, wake up. Mm -hmm. That was me. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It was like. Let's keep it going. I know you're nervous. I know you're like, you know, feeling a little bit overwhelmed, but hey, let's let's perk up, y'all, because we're having fun here. And um, and and if you didn't think so, I'm gonna sing a song, I'm gonna make you run over here. You know, <laughs> you're gonna get a little rover <laughs> workout by the time I get done with you. And and if your heart ain't pumping from the adrenaline instead of the nerves, mm-hmm. then I don't know what's wrong with you. You don't have a pulse. I got so know? much energy. I'm about to give you some of this. This is about to That's be- it. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> and then the other thing too, about, about, about me on the show, uh, I got no shame. You know, the thing about being an only child sometimes is you don't have brothers. And you don't have siblings telling you, you stupid. Mm-hmm. Stop at that's dumb. You do stuff. And, and, and my mom was the Hercules, Hercules. That was my mom, you know, <laughs> my so, baby. It was not my baby. Oh, I mean, look, you dropped it and it broke, but baby, that's my baby. That's my baby. He, look at he nobody can shatter it in as many pieces as my baby. You right. <laughs> 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 and so um so so when you when you when you go out and you do stuff and then they, you, you present that and somebody goes, Okay. So now with the contestants, I stopped and I said, Look, I know you feel dumb you know what i mean like you Mm. you feel you don't feel comfortable in your own skin because ain't nothing about this is normal even though the wonderful production assistants are saying just act natural be yourself have Mm. fun Mm. i've never gone through the scenario of being taken away from my family put strange clothes on me put makeup on me have a cord shoved up my butt and then said hey this is fun you know nothing about that is normal Mm. and so i was i wanted to assure them that like you will never be the strangest one in the room. Mm. You will never be the most nervous person in the room. At least my energy will 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 equal what nervous energy is. Except mine wasn't nerves, you know. Right. So there is nothing you can do to feel embarrassed. I will out embarrass you <laughs> yeah. every single day. So you are my free Watch this. to get comfortable, right? So you, you so come on, be comfortable. If you think that you're gonna look silly. Standing up here answering these questions. Wait till you hear this dumbass song I'm about to sing. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you remember about your first day on the Nick Arcade set? Uh, I, I was uh, I was nervous, extremely mm. nervous. I went from doing stand up. I went from a regular job working at a data center to mm. doing stand up, which I'd done for like a year and a half. Mm. Uh, that that segue into doing audience warm ups, which is basically you know stand up comedy, but for a sh- people in to see a show. Yeah, you was doing uh, that for like the Mickey Mouse Club or something like that. Mickey Mouse Club. I did uh, I, my first uh, my first warm up gig was a show, a game show that used to air on MTV called Remote Control. Remote Control, with late, yeah, with the late great Ken Ober, uh, Colin Quinn, um, uh, Adam Sandler. It, it was on on the show as a character. Mm. Um, I did um, Let's Make a Deal. 
uh, win, uh, t- uh, team win, lose or draw, just a whole bunch of shows that came in the shoot. And I was, you know, one of the go-to guys they brought in to, to do the audience warm up at mm. the brand new uh, Universal Studios and the brand new at the time Disney MGM Studios. Mm. Um, but um, I was nervous, man. I I was nervous because, and I, I was so nervous. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a conversation I actually had. Um, in this business, you know, a lot of times, at, to their credit, executives and network people like to appease the talent, as they call us, you know, to keep us happy, to keep us from being nervous, to mm. keep us calm. But I, re- I actually called over the executive producer, a gentleman named Scott Fishman, and I reached back and I turned off my microphone pack so that nobody can hear me. I mm. said, Scott, listen if I'm doing something that is totally screwing up, totally screwing up, I want you to tell me. And he goes, okay. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're doing the showbiz executive. You're not going to hear from my agent. You're not going to hear from an attorney because I already know, this is like my foresight of what I was getting into. I said, Mm -hmm. I already know that when, when the show is over, if I look like a total and complete wide open ass on the show, on the show, Mm. No kid is gonna wait and read the credits and go, who directed that thing? Right. They're gonna be <laughs> uh, who's the executive producer that let that go by? Mm. All they're gonna stop and go, Phil <laughs> Phil. <laughs> right. So I said, I am the face of this show. You guys are the brains and you're the muscle, but I'm the face of the show. So mm. I want you to tell me, call me out. If I do something that's a little, if I'm going a little over the top, if maybe I should pull back, if maybe I shouldn't say or do that thing again, I want you to tell me this is my first show. No one's ever going to blame you at the end of the day. America, if I screw this up, will blame me. Mm. And that's the relationship we had right from the start. I was so nervous. I'm like, like, keep it real with me. I'm so nervous. Keep it real with me. I'm mm. feeling this out. I'm working this out. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hosting this show by Braille. You know what I mean? Right. And I need, I need you to keep the lumps in order. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah, I was nervous, man. Super nervous. Now, is there anything on the show that they made you do that you didn't want to do? With them ugly like damn sweaters. Like a song or a dance or like something like. You were, you were talking, you missed what? They made me wear <laughs> them ugly damn sweaters. <laughs> And I was gonna ask you too who's, <laughs> whose idea was them <laughs> sweaters, them uh, button ups, but now that I know, ain't mine. All right, with my idea, not at all. <laughs> not a, I auditioned for Nick Arcade wearing a Martin Luther King shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was around them days where everybody was like wearing the uh, the, the, the wood necklaces and the, you know the. <laughs> Dude, I, I will find you a picture that we took, and it's yeah, that's the, the stuff I, I have a picture at the office wearing the shirt, um, hmm. but um. Uh, is there anything that they made me do? No, look, everything I did, uh, some of the things that are iconic that people remember about the show um, with respect to my hosting uh, mm. came from me. Like the, 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 the songs, the songs, if you watch the beginning, there are no songs. Songs don't exist. Mm. The songs became a thing where we had a situation where we had a technical hole. So they stopped shooting the show. Um, the audience warm up goes out and keeps the try to keep the audience entertained so they don't get antsy. Mm. I decided to join them because, you know, like I said, I used to do that. So, right. and of course, the kids get a big kick. Not only are they being entertained by an audience warm up guy, but the host is coming over and he's talking with us. And I remember like not knowing how long this 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 technical hole was going to take. Mm. So I so the story is someone up in the control room said. Hey, why don't we play some music down there? But did they play like Nickelodeon theme songs? No. Mm. Did they play music from some of the rides out at Universal Studios? The Back to the Future theme, the E.T. theme? No. (laughs) What did they play? They played the Nick Arcade theme song on what seemed like an eternity freaking loop. It It was... (laughs) Dun, 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 dun. Hey, nah, after the third one, nah. <laughs> so this went on, honestly, for about five minutes. 
Then the technical hole was done. I went back behind the podium. We started to do the show again. So when that song came up, it's the song that they played um, for Video Challenge. It was the same song. Right. And so when the song played, I was like, um, um, uh, I, I can't even remember the, the, the song I made, but I totally ad-libbed something that was like, um, uh, there it is, it's such a sin to play in that crazy song again. You know, it's like I just yeah, made yeah. up something. <laughs> And that was my way of saying, why are you to the control room? It was mm -hmm. an inside joke from me to the control room. Mm -hmm. Then when we came back, I made up another, I ad-libbed something as we ran back. Mm -hmm. And then I was done. The next time we did video challenge, I didn't sing a song. Then all of a sudden we hear all, you know, from the speakers. Mm -hmm. And then the stage manager's listening on his walkie talkie, I mean, his earpiece, he's like, okay, okay, I'll tell him. Okay, sure, copy that. Hey, Phil, um, the song that you did earlier, yeah. He goes, um, how come you didn't sing it this time? I said, oh, that was just me saying, like, screw you to them upstairs. He goes, mm. yeah, but they liked it. Could you do it again? Go ahead, Phil. Do that little thing you do. Do that thing you did. The that thing you thing. did, do the thing you did. And that's how the songs became a thing. It literally, I was Who Line Is It Anyway before Whose Line Is It Anyway <laughs> was doing the improv of making up the song. And that's mm. literally and every single song was made up on the spot. Uh, and, I, and I started doing it for like, you know, different things. Sometimes it would be the, 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 the video challenge. Sometimes it would be if it were a different puzzle, one of the other mm -hmm. points, puzzles, pop, splits, you know, I would just make them up and I would just in the moment, in the spot, seeing whatever it was, I would just make up something just right. Even when something happened, my favorite one, and the only reason I remember this is because for a rap party, they put together a collection of Phil's greatest hits like it was a record. <laughs> and there was one which I had, the, I, it was like, it was that little uh, like writing thing that you had to do. The, the, it was like a magna doodle. Mm -hmm. and, and and there was a, like a magnet that you had to write with. And I dropped it. And I remember the song is like, red team's coming to visit me. And I dropped it. And I'm like, I dropped a little writing thingy. Like I, like I was singing about what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, that's where it came. Once they gave me the green light to do it, I went buck wild. It was like, all right, here we go. You said you wanted more. <laughs> said you wanted more. You wanted Phil more. Yeah. You gonna get more. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got it. <laughs> dope, man. So you, that's so how that happened, man. That's how making up stuff on the on the spot freestyle. That's dope. Yep. Yep. Now, Nick Arcade ran from ninety two till when. It actually ran from 91 to 92. 91 to 92. Mm -hmm. It was that short? Yeah, was it. Were there that many? That, isn't amazing? Reasons? Dude, look, it, it, we shot the Why shows. Because I remember that show for at least like three years. Yeah. We shot the show in 1990. Mm. It premiered uh, as a brand new show at the top of 1991. Mm. We did one season in 1991. We got, we, we got picked up again. We did another season in 1992. Mm. Then while we were waiting to hear if we were going to come back, we got nominated for uh, the the cable ver version of a uh, Emmy Award called an Ace Award, mm -hmm. and we were waiting just to you know get the good news that we were coming back. In the meantime, they decided to make a tour. Double Dare Live had been touring the country, playing arenas, mm -hmm. so they decided let's see if we can not they they meaning the powers that be in, at Viacom mm -hmm. said let's see if we can come up with another show. You know, mm. wild and crazy kids do that. And Nick takes over your school. Let's see if we can get an arena sized level tour that could go out sometimes instead of double there. And so mm. they, they, you know, took Michael Malley and myself, put us together and created the Nick live tour where mm. we did games from both of our shows. Plus some other things that you've seen on TV, mostly wild and crazy kids stuff. Cause wild and crazy kids never did like, tour or you know do anything outside of just their episodes so mm -hmm. we thought it'd be fun to do recreate some of those games because kids love that show too that mm -hmm. they never would get the chance to do and so it was incorporated into the nick live tour and um and then we got the word that we weren't coming back mm -hmm. um but again this is another reason and i mean this man i've said it a million times i'm gonna say it again with y'all 90s nick fans are the best anywhere because nick arcade did not get the backing and the promotion and the marketing that all of these other shows did. Mm -hmm. Do you know that you cannot, well, now you can. I used to be able to say you cannot. But up until recently, some other T-shirt company now has gotten the licensing to make 
these products. Mm. But until like 2020, you cannot buy any Nick Arcade merch. You can buy a Nick Arcade shirt. You can buy a Nick Arcade hat. You can yeah. buy a Nick Arcade pin. You can buy a Nick Arcade. I would go to gaming conventions and Mark Summers would be there and people would come over to him with the Double Dare video game for him to sign. People would come over to Mike O'Malley with the Guts video game to sign. But yeah. the show about video games. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> no video game. Don't have a when game. we were on tour, you know, you can go to the concession stand. People can go to the concession stand at the tour that I was co-hosting and buy themselves a, a purple parrot shirt, a green monkey shirt. They mm -hmm. can buy themselves a Tommy and Pickle shirt. They can come back with ah real monsters. They can get a Clarissa Explains It All shirt. They can mm -hmm. got it. They can come back with a shirt that says, do you have it? They can come up with super sloppy double dare, but I'm the black man up on stage. You can't buy Jack about the thing that I'm pimping right now. <laughs> I don't know. What to yeah. And what, then the other not thing, that like, successful even, of a show, like, do people even, not remember? Even, like, what's even even with respect to marketing? As, as I said, marketing because um, now that I'm going around now, I do cons and I do gaming expos, and making yeah. appearances. At the, um, it's it's hard for people to. And there's a couple of pictures that I you know bring with me to autograph. People go, "How can you bring any more?" I said because they never did a photo press day with me. Right. Every picture you ever see of me, I am in motion because it was a screen grab. Mm. You had to find oh. a moment where, I mean, and you had to find a moment where I looked decent enough to say, here's a picture to use as promotion in mm. which it isn't blurry because right. everything was a screen. We, they, you can find pictures of, of Kirk Fogg leaning up against Omac. You can mm. find pictures of Mark and Robin, you know, so you can find pictures of Mike and Mo. you know, mm. there's Summer Sanders with Billy the Answerhead. No, no don't feel. which is where I'm coming to with the fans because a show without without uh, uh, merchandising, marketing, and a lot of press, people remember right on par with Double Dare guts. You know, um, um, figure it out, and 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 um, uh, what's the other one? The Legend of the Temple, mm -hmm. and. I, I owe that to the fans because it wasn't like it was thrown in your face through these other ancillary methods. It mm. was just the fandom and the, the, the audience, the Nickelodeon 90s kids just liking what they see and go, all right, you know, they put the show in their face if the network didn't and marketing didn't put it in their face. They put it in their face. And so the fact that I can still go out now and be in a booth right beside Mark Summers because the fans said, no, no, we remember you, man. We remember you. We remember the show. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I give I give major thanks and just, you know, credit to them, man. They are like the backbone of this legacy. Ah, man, you, you really made an impact. So I don't know why, you know, you wouldn't be in that upper echelon of like, you know, even even just merch or just you know having your name or face out there more, I feel like you should be one of them ones that should be heralded as the person that helped build Nickelodeon. Uh, well, look, I, I appreciate that. I, like I said, I I came in uh, toward the end of my run there. I did a decade there. Stood, like I said, we started shooting Nick Arcade in 1990, mm -hmm. and the last show that I hosted was a show called You're On on Nickelodeon in 1999. Mm. And by the time I got to the end, I did feel like I, I'd grown in the business. I was no longer nervous. You could put me in front of 27,000 people. We had, we played on tour, Nick Live tour, we played Madison Square Garden to a sold out house of 27,000 people. And yet I walked out on that stage and like without dropping a sweat because now it became second nature. I grew as a professional business person knowing you know, refining my craft or what it is that I did. Mm. Um, uh, but, uh, so by the time I got to the end, I felt like I, you know, had a voice in the company that was competent. Mm. You know, I knew, I knew a little bit more about how the business was run. So I, you know, I was able to like, you know, work and like even help with the, you know, the development behind the scenes, some shows, I mean, things that you, people would know, like, um, uh, I worked with Klosky Chupo, the people that did Rugrats, I Real Monsters, um, you know, those shows, um, mm. in developing a Susie Carmichael spinoff show. Mm. Oh. 
you know, I was part of that team that put together a pilot. And I actually, I still have the, the DVD of the Susie Carmichael uh, pilot that I worked on. Mm. Uh, I worked with um, the team that was, you know, working behind the scenes to do um, the, the Double Dare 2000. Um, mm. Everybody remembers, uh, you know, Dave and, and Vivian and these other folks that did Slime Time. But we, meaning Mike, Mark, and I actually started Slime Time. It was like an interstitial they did during the summer. So when they decided they wanted to make Slime Time his own show, mm. again, they, you know, I was a part of the, the team. We had done it, for, you know, for a while. So it was a lot of stuff like toward the end there that I was able to have a voice in to, to kind of help with, you know, keeping good content out there. But um, mm. uh, anyway, I, I appreciate it, man. Like I said, I'm just thankful that, um, you know, I had, a, I had, it was a great run. I was mm. thankful to be there and I'm, I'm happy that I learned like, you know, I didn't go up there just trying to flex. If I tried to make a point about something, it was because it came from a place of knowledge, having now well, having now learned something wasn't mm. just talking out of my butt because I'm Phil Moore, you know, right. <laughs> I was bringing an idea to the table because I really felt it would be beneficial to the network and to the audience. Mm. Yeah, so you answered a question that I had because once they started moving away from more like game show content and them needing actual hosts, I wanted to know like how was it for you to, to you know to pivot into something else? Or did you feel like you would like lose your identity or you wouldn't be able to create or make money or you know something like that? But you answered my question, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I do now. It, 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 what I what I ended up doing. Um, immediately following uh, the closing of Nickelodeon Studios, first of all, it wasn't. The thing that was interesting was the studio shut down, mm. you know, the, so it, Nickelodeon always took great care of me and I'm forever grateful uh, for them. The, the 90s decade, the people that ran the place, it was, like I said, a phenomenal team of just men and women that, oh my God, I, I can't even, I can just be Jerry Lay from Jerry Laybourne up and down. It was just great folks. Mm. Um, but, um, uh, and even people that did things that I wasn't really attached to, you know, you get to know the people working on Nick Jr. You know, you get to know right. the people that create the music for the show. And, you know, mm. I, like I said, I work with Klosky Chupo. They were in animation. I, you know, mm. I don't draw, you know, yeah, right. you, but you get to know the folks, you know, uh, it was, it was, it was family. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, when the, sh the show network was closing down, there was that thing, okay, what do I do now? Because it's not a thing of like going to anybody complaining, hey, give me another show or do another thing with me. Hmm. Like the place is closing down. Hmm. So it was like, what do I do? You know, do I go back to doing stand up? You know, the, the, the landscape of stand up had changed. Right. Um, you know, um, a lot of the shows, Orlando was now sort of, they, they, they had made themselves into Hollywood East, but then they were slowly losing that to Atlanta. So mm -hmm. the the so a lot of the other shows that were coming there that I did warm up for weren't coming there anymore. Right. So it, it was sort of an interesting time to like, okay, what do I do now? Um, I tried my hand at acting. There's a movie called Rosewood. Um, it was a Warner mm -hmm. Brothers movie directed by John, the late great John Singleton. Mm -hmm. It stars you know uh, Ving Rhymes, Don Cheadle, you know. Um, uh, John Voight, Esther Roll. I mean, mm. like, you know, and, and, and I'm in the thing. And so I tried right. my hand at that um, because, you know, I, I, I never, you know, took any acting thing, but I said, let me give it a try. And again, figuring out, like you said, what, what am I going to do next? You mm. know, how am I going to, I, I no longer have a toddler. I have a, I have a, a 10 year old running around now. Right. <laughs> you know, um, what, what are we, you know, I, I, I have, I have, I have responsibilities. What am I, what am I going to do? Um, ultimately I ended up, um, uh, jumping right into working behind the cameras because this was after nine 11 and, mm. you know, right now in Los Angeles, right now we're going through a writer's strike. So I am not doing anything, you know, other right. than development. When I say development, I have a team of people in my production company around pitching shows, but I'm not like if, actively working on any show right now that's what happened also when 9 11 happened just the world came to a halt and so there weren't a lot of places to go and like get a job acting hosting or whatever mm. um but when things started to gear up um i found that i had a niche for writing and that segue into production for host driven shows and game shows because that's what i had done again I didn't just go up there and just say, hey, I'm just the guy, I'm talent. I was learning 
through these experiences, learning from everybody I met, learning from, you know, other hosts that came there before me, you know, Mike and Mark were there before I got there, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, And, and uh, you know, every time I met a new executive producer, by now we had, we had Brian um, Tomlinson, who's now the president of Nickelodeon. uh, I mean, Brian Robbins, I'm sorry, who was, who is now the president of Nickelodeon, but he's the guy that created a co-created all that. And 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 Keenan and Kel. So I'm like, I'm watching these people. We had people like Kim Fields from you know different world coming mm-hmm. in to direct episode. So now I'm like absorbing, man. Yeah. I'm absorbing yeah. all of this. And and so when the, the the segue that I made was into writing and then ultimately producing, I was a producer for the original G4. I, I was a producer yeah, I uh, I for the show for the show uh, X Play. X Play. You know what yeah. I mean? yeah, you know. So I was learning, and so I, you know, when the world opened back up after the tragedy of nine eleven, um, I I jumped in and you know exercised another muscle that that I had. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I didn't have to be because another thing again is that the whole thing is I, I it's, there's this thing of satisfaction. Like there was nothing to me like trying to recapture the glory days. It's like it was something that I wanted to do and I got a chance to do it. It got checked off the bucket list. Mm. What next? Now the, the, the closing down of the studio may have actively caused me to pursue the what next sooner than I had anticipated, mm. but there was still always the idea of the, well, what next? Mm. Ultimately, eventually I'm going to have to figure out the what next and the, the, the mandate of the studio shutting down just dictated when I would start that journey. Mm. And, I just fell back on other things that I had been learning through my career as on camera host. All you saw was on camera host, but I was absorbing learning so many other things about the business Mm. so that when it was, you know, when, when it was time to make that, what next I could segue into writing, I could segue into producing, you know, and now I'm back at doing game shows. The last show that I produced right now, season four of Kevin Hart's celebrity game face, Mm. all the crazy nutsy things that you see the people do i'm mm-hmm. part of the team that creates the games so you know it's still in my dna man still doing it right now how did that uh what next attitude affect you during covid um dude i was blessed like crazy man i never i didn't i'm going through COVID now not mm. experiencing COVID. uh i worked straight through COVID. Uh, mm-hmm. i was really blessed dude really blessed um there was a show that i was going to be I, I, was, I was working on a show uh, for Nickelodeon starring that YouTube phenomenon kid named Ryan. Uh, he does Ryan's tour review. Yeah, well, yeah. we did a show called Ryan's uh, Mystery Play Date. Mm-hmm. And so I was working on that. That took us all the way up until March 2020. And I was going to be doing a show for Twitch. Twitch was going to do their first in-studio show featuring, featuring gamers on Twitch by having to compete in gaming competitions and also IRL challenges. Right. And we were gonna do it in a studio so that we could build the IRL challenge. We were going to have them do in real life things that you would do or your character would do in a game. Right. Right. And so that was the original plan. COVID happened. So the powers that be, the production company, the executive producers, they all were like, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And somebody realized who they are. They're like, we're about to make a TV show for Twitch. Twitch is used to streaming. Right. So what we did then was put our heads together and figure out a way to do the same show. It was going to be smaller now because everybody was going to be home, but Mm. it was the beginning of people doing not just content, but producing a edited television show type piece of entertainment, Mm. but from everybody's home. We ended up sending everybody, everybody already had a green screen, but we sent everybody a green screen. Everybody Mm. was going to be the contestants so that everybody's background looked the same. Um, We figured out the video games and it was up to some other tech people to do hook everything up so that everybody could do whatever and we could monitor it from the, you know, our computers and stuff. Uh, My job was still the IRL challenges. My job was to come up with the games, but now they had to fit on a, you know, four by six table Mm -hmm. because we were going to build these props, send them to them in pieces, send a big table that they would sit 
And so like right now, I got a table right here. Mm-hmm. So we would send them a table that would sit in front of their computer screen or their computer camera. Mm-hmm. And you then I would show them how to set it up and you know how the pieces all came together. So when it came time to do the IRL challenges, we could do it right there, you know, on the spot with everybody in their homes all across America. So mm. I did that. We did it for the first season. We got picked up right away. We did another season. That was 2020. Mm. You know, so I worked during, during, through COVID. Then when 2021 came around, Nickelodeon um, uh, was doing a new game show. They were going to go back into the studio. Mm. By this time, we'd had established COVID protocols. You know, mm. we were, you know, when you went into a place, mass testing the whole nine yards. So there was a show called Tuned In. It was a game show in which kids would answer questions based on trivia from Nick Tunes. And if you got it wrong, you got slime. You know, that's basically it. A right answer gets your points. Wrong answer gets you a dose of slime on you. <laughs> and so I, I was a producer on that show. Mm. And we would go in, we, you know, we'd wear the mask, we'd have the face things on. Because mm. the kids, of course, they didn't want the kids wearing anything. They wanted yeah, to yeah, see yeah. their beautiful faces on camera. Mm. Um, so that, that was 2021. So the bulk of the, the, the shutdown for COVID, man, I was really blessed. I worked right through it. Right now, I'm going through, when I say I'm going through COVID, is the idea of like, you know, with the writer's strike, businesses come to a screeching halt. Mm. That's why you get to talk to me today. Because <laughs> <laughs> of why is you not be reachable? <laughs> you, you, you guys are like, hey, Phil, listen, we're just wondering, can we fit it into your busy schedule? My busy schedule. Oh, yeah, let me check. <laughs> when I, well, let me, I when I get off, when I get off of here, it's like, well, let's see, what can I watch on Netflix now? <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> You know, it's like I'm waiting for tomorrow so I can so I can watch the new episode of Citadel. All right, what, what's coming on next? You know, right. uh, another but time. At least I'm not trapped in my house. That's the I guess I say it's a positive. That's thing. the one. You know, with, with COVID, I mean, you know, last night, last night, uh, I keep making all of these uh, um, Fast X references because last night I went with my son to see Fast X. I can <laughs> I can get out of the house. You know. I'm bugging him. He's a working man. Hey, you want to go to the movie? Dad, it's 10 in the morning. Yeah, come on, let's go. Come on, I ain't oh, doing nothing. Man. Like, I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, Dad, I am. <laughs> All right, what well, time to get off of work? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm not going to keep you much longer because, you know, you're hungry and, you know, it's late for us. I, I know you say you ain't going to do it. I'm smelling the food over there. I'm smelling it. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, I guess my last question is, uh, well, second to last question. Um, what show would you have liked to host that you didn't host? Easy Whether guts. it be on Nickelodeon love or... No, Love Guts. guts. Love Guts. 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 And even with respect to game shows, because, and again, you know, Mike had his, his, his take on how to host it. He did it like a sports uh, analyst, which was great. Hmm. Um, um, but, you know, I would have been running around the track with the kids. I would have said, strap me up with them bungee cords. I'm not doing the show unless I can bungee with the kids. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I would have translated that into, I mean, Guts, really, out of all the Nickelodeon shows, Guts was my personal favorite show. Uh, and, um, you know, any chance I had to go over to watch a taping, I would. Uh, you know, the, 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 all of the tech people uh, allowed my son and I to harness up and climb the agri prag just one day when nobody was mm. in there. You know, they were getting ready to do it. They're not matter of fact, they, they was a dark day. They weren't getting ready to tape, but they mm. were just doing maintenance checks because they were going to be shooting the next day. And I'm like, hey, you know, my son was in, you know, out of the studio visiting. We would go out sometimes just to working at universal studios allowed you to just go ride the rides whenever you wanted. So, you know, mm. it was, that was kind of an extra, another little bonus, you know? Right. So there were plenty of days when we were, when we were down where we would just go out and play in the park and, and to get the, and the parking area the, that, that we use was connected to the studios, not like where, where customers come in and stuff. Visiting. Mm. So, so I had to walk through the sound stages to get to my car. And so, you know, we stopped by um, the Guts ones and they were, you know, lights were on and everything was rigged up. And we just kind of said, hey, can we climb the crag? You know, and, <laughs> and I, let, I let my son do the bungee. Thing. By the way, uh, I, I mentioned my son a couple of times. Here. He's also is a, is a Nick, uh, a Nick um, on camera person. You, ever, you watch the show, figure it out, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they had the charade brigade, right? 
Mm. The little chocolate dark haired dude with the cute little face. That's my son. That's David. Yeah. <laughs> that's David. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, there's uh, he was on an episode of All That. There's an episode where uh, Keenan would play Super Dude. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. and uh, Josh would play Milkman as arch nemesis. Mm-hmm. And there's an episode where Milkman had a shrinking ray, which shrink Super Dude down to make him look like a little kid. Little kid was my kid. <laughs> you know? So you know it, the perks. He, he was he was he was a pro at it. No, but here's the thing. I never used nepotism. It was like they would ask, like, like again, walking around a lot, people would see him with me and mm. go, he's a cute kid. Does he do anything? I'm like, well, you, you won't shut up about video games. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but hey, you expensive. Go earn some money. <laughs> but I told him, yeah, but I told him, like, you know, look, you've got to go to get, look, I'll get, I'll get you to the table. This mm. is where I think nepotism you know, I don't call it nepotism because like everybody else, like, if you got family, you know, you, if you got family, uh, you, you get hired at Starbucks, you're going to try to get some of your friends in there. That's yeah, just, yeah. Mm-hmm. which is, you know, how you should be, mm-hmm. you know, but I told him, I said, I'll get you a seat at the table, but you got to eat on your own. Bar. So, That's a bar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you, I can bring it to the table, but you got to be good. Actually, you ain't going right. to get it just because of me. No, 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 no. Listen, we all know that the hardest part is getting the audition. Right. You know, so that's when I use what, what position I had to get them at the table. But mm-hmm. when you walked in, like I would actually not go with him on, to auditions. I would let my ex-wife, his mother go mm-hmm. with him. So when he walked in and he's looking at these new producers, I'm not attached with him. Right. Yeah. 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 You, yeah. You, so they, you, so they you, see you, him, not you. You want to Exactly. I want him to do stuff and, 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 and get things on his own merit. Right. Uh, but whatever I can to help get him at the table, I'm going to do that's, a, you know, I'm a parent. That's what you yeah, want, right. but I'm not going to falsify his record. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If he gets it, that's because he went up there. He crushed it on his own. Got it on your own merit. You ain't get it. Cause you're my kid. Exactly. Yeah. But I'll just see the table. You got to eat it on your own though. Right. Oh, really dope now my last question for tonight is right. i know you said <laughs> you got nothing going on right now everything's coming to a screeching <laughs> halt but you know because you don't stop moving i know your mind don't stop moving like what's what's next like do you have anything coming out of pipeline are you right no you you know just putting ideas out uh, there yes well right now i'm in what we call pitch mode mm-hmm. um i have a team of three amazing people uh i mean four amazing people three no wait that, that sounds wrong i have three people on my right. team that makes four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm four. <laughs> and uh, uh, what we've been doing is, you know, so having been in this business, having had the the, the, the fortunate situation of, of getting to know networks and getting to know people, mm-hmm. uh, we've been creating content, show ideas, and we've been pitching. So this has afforded us the, the, the ability to do some things that According to them, we should be doing this all the time, Phil. But normally I'm busy. You know, I don't have time to necessarily write stuff up, put stuff together, do a pitch meeting if I'm, you know, in, you know, Hawaii doing Love Island like I did one year. You know, it's like, yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. They're, they're all looking at, yeah, you're eating, we're over eating top rum, Phil. What that? You know? <laughs> um, so this time we've been like, we've been like pounding, man. You're, I can't turn my brain off. Mm. Um, we've already done, uh, we pitched, uh, to four different places. We mm. pitched to some, a series of like five or six different shows. And, and I'm actually in the midst of writing up a new one, uh, which potentially we want to, well, not potentially we, I'm, I'm writing it up because we're going to take it to Fox. Uh, I, the other thing I've been doing also is some of my colleagues, uh, who have gotten their pitches, uh, uh, picked up. Um, mm. they're, they're doing presentations and pilots. So they've been, you know, bringing me in to work a couple of weeks with them and, you know, help put everything together for the presentation, you know, shooting pilots is, 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 is it takes the same amount of work, but you're only just doing one episode, but it mm. still requires the same amount of work. Once you're done, you're not coming back the next day. And then you're waiting to hear if the network goes to, if they decide to go to series. So mm. I've been doing a lot of that. So I've been helping out some of my, my colleagues who've been fortunate enough to get their stuff uh, pitched and picked up. And my team and I are pitching our own original stuff. And, you know, we are, you know, just like, you know, trying to keep moving, trying to keep active, keep the gray mare going right there. And then, 
You'll see what happens. I'm waiting for that phone call to say, hey, Phil, all right, as soon as the strike is over, we're going to be doing this show that you pitched to us. So mm-hmm. that's, that's, that I think, if I had to say there's something new on the bucket list, that would be that. I never thought about, you know, being a showrunner or a show creator before. Um, but now, again, just like with the Nickelodeon times, now that I've created content and shows for so many other people, mm-hmm. it, that I've learned a lot. So now you, you, I, I know the business a little bit more. I have ideas based on things that I've seen. I've worked on shows that I didn't really particularly think were that great. And in my mm. brain, I, I fixed them. We didn't do it, but you know what I mean? You're like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You kind of improved on the on idea. Show. Here's what I would do. Yeah, and then right. you, you take that nugget of thing and you go on another show and go, ooh, this show is great except for this element. Oh, I would do this. And all of a sudden, now I'm sitting in my living room, you go, add more. <laughs> oh, you take these two things and put it together and no one will know because it, it, they didn't do it here and they didn't mm-hmm. do it there, but they fit together and I'm calling it a new thing, you know? Right. Uh, by the way, I don't know why I did the Power Rangers thing. <laughs> <laughs> you've been a joy, man. <laughs> I tell you, I'm glad, like, I'm glad when I get to talk to people that I really look up to that they live up to it. <laughs> so you've been nothing short of amazing, man. I just want to tell you personally, like I said, since a little kid, oh, you inspired me just seeing somebody that looked like me on my TV screen on one of my favorite shows on one of my favorite networks. Um, I wish the best for you, man. Good luck on the, uh, on Thank all so the much. shows that you're pitching, man. And Thank you, bro. I love you, man. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Oh, man, look, I really appreciate it, man. It's good talking with y'all. It was a lot of fun. Again, sorry I was late to the party, but once we got going, man, we cranked it up. It was a lot of fun. All good, man. All love, man. And and again, I'm dead serious, man. Your your intuitiveness as a a podcast, you go, look, when you're looking at major stars like Ben Affleck and them, when when they do interviews and junkets and podcasts, we get asked the same questions over and over again. And mm. even though it's repeated for us, it's the first time for you and the audience. So we try to be nice and be accommodating. But it is so refreshing when somebody has like dug a little deeper and they come up with questions that I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. I haven't heard that one before. I talked about it to my friends with a couple beers, but like, <laughs> let me tell you about it. So, uh, Jay, that means that y'all got something going, y'all thinking. Y'all, y'all some thinking brothers. Y'all some thinking ninjas. I right. ain't just fighting with your hands. You're fighting with your brains, man. I mean, we got some ideas, so, you know, Wait, man, you need think, some think writers right or now. some ideas think, or something. Look, think of something right now. Right now, right now. Think of something. Right now. Ready? Ow! See? <laughs> that! was that ninja <laughs> brain power, man. It's my third eye, brother. Dang! <laughs> see? Didn't even see the punch coming. Oh, the force is strong with this one. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> man, you've been awesome, man. I can't. I, I mean, I got more questions. Maybe we'll talk some sometime down the line. But you know, as for right now, we appreciate you for coming to the dojo, chopping it up with us. And like I said, good luck, much much success. Um, and hopefully, you know, we'll talk to you soon about something else. Hopefully, when you you know, if, if you got a new project and you want to announce it, you know, you know, you can come here. I'll hit you up. And if you want to chat about anything, look now that now that we, we we've been chatting and y'all know how to reach me, hit me up, <laughs> hit me up. I love it's like especially now. now. Don't wait until strikes over. Then you're like, oh, that Phil, he never returns my call. But right now, you yeah. got me. I know where you I'm at. The audience, home. Man. I know he home. home. Nothing. <laughs> if I'm not at home, I'm at the movies or I'm at the beach. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm out in my yard flying my drone. That's it. Something. <laughs> That's it. Again, I'm Phil, man. My drone from my living room now. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> We appreciate right. it, man. Thank you, My thank pleasure. you, thank you. No problem. And but listen, when we get off here, I'm going to send you this picture that I was talking about. Yes. Uh, Bobby, you won't appreciate yep. this picture. All right. You won't appreciate the picture. All right. Definitely, man. All right, fellas. Thanks for having me. All, All right, right, man. Have a good one, man. Take care now. Bye. Thank you.